Hey folks, thanks so much for coming out. My name is Matthew Kim and with me are Shafiq Maradia, Michael Liu, and Mark Waldron. The name of our app is Flixseed. With Flixseed, we wanted to make it really easy for users to share their movies and their TV shows over local area network across different platforms and across different devices. So imagine a scenario where Shafiq is my roommate, he's got a movie on his computer that I want to watch, but he's busy right now, so obviously he doesn't want to be sharing screens. All we would need to do is fire up both of our Flixie apps and I'd be able to stream the movie over from his computer to mine just as easily as I'd watch a movie on YouTube or Netflix. We built Flixie as a desktop app using JavaScript in Electron, which allowed us to get around some of the limitations of a traditional browser environment. Um, for example, we're able to access the user's file system in order to manipulate media files, and we're also able to uh, deploy a node server from the user's computer. Uh, with that, I want to hand it over to Shafiq, who's going to talk to us about the basic functionality of our app. Thanks, Matt. So if this is your first time firing a Flixie, it's actually really easy to use. You're automatically directed to this file upload screen. Here, you can click on the Browse for Media button, which then opens up a Finder window. You can then click on any file or directory, and then dra drag, drag that into the Flixie app. Flixie will then recursively traverse through all of the folders and grab all of your media file data. It then makes a get request to the IMDB API and stores all that information into our Loki database. Flixie then directs you to this library screen. Here you can see all the files that were just uploaded. You can hover over each of the posters to look at some of the IMDB ratings, or you can click into any one of the posters. So let's say we click into um, Avengers. Here you, can, here you can see some of the, some more IMDB information such as um, directors, actors, runtime, rating, and plot. Then you can click into Play Movie, which then takes, into you, takes you to the built-in media player, and then you can enjoy your movie. Now I'm going to pass it off to Mike to talk about some of our extra features. Thanks, Shafiq. So one of the first things we implemented to, into our app was Chromecast integration. What that means is that you can watch your movie with your friends and family on a TV, and not only on your computer. Another thing we implemented was uh, voice commands using a lightweight JS library called Anyang. With it, we were able to add voice commands such as video play or video pause so that we could control the video without having to press any buttons. In the future, we'd like to be even more lazy and implement a mobile, mobile device as a remote control. So now we're going to demo one of the features that we're especially proud of, which is the ability to play other users' media files as if they were hosted on your own computer. So we're going to um, demonstrate that in a second. So if we go to the network tab, you'll see a list of all the other users who are on your network. And uh, why don't we look at, yep, there's my computer. And we'll go to uh, Shafiq's computer and see what media files he has hosted. After clicking on Shafiq's computer, all of his media files were appended onto our library. So now we can view any of his movies as if we had it on our own computer. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mark, and he's going to talk about some of our technical challenges. Thank you, Mike. One of the biggest technical challenges we faced with Flixie was providing a high quality video player for you to enjoy all your media files. It was kind of like this scene in Captain America where he's fighting all these agents in this elevator. Each of these agents would represent a different file type that we wanted to play. HTML5 video element only supports three different file types. And as you can see, there's many more than three agents in this elevator. So what we ended up doing was using something called Web Chimera. What Web Chimera does is it's a wrapper for VLC's video player, and it uses VLC's library in order to provide high quality video and support multiple file types. But this wasn't easy. Web Chimera doesn't have a lot of documentation for us to reference, so we had to dig into the code base in order to figure out a lot of the problems and solve them so that we could pro provide this video player. We ended up having to compile all the VLC library files for Mac OS X, Windows, and Linux in order to provide this player. Thank you, everybody. We're Flixie.